Hello guys, this channel is called Laravel Daily, but I think we're talking too much about Laravel specifically and too little or not enough about stuff that happens before we write Laravel code, which means soft things like project planning, scoping and general thinking on where to start, on fundamentals of the project, architecture of the project, client management, project management before developers write the code. And often the case is that the same developer, if they're a freelancer, is also a project manager, client manager, negotiator, and stuff like that. So in this video, I want to emphasize two things that I do in that planning phase of Laravel projects. So this video will be about Laravel example, but applicable to almost any IT project. I often do that in my courses if there's a step-by-step -step course, like for example, in this case, I took a real project from Upwork and the first lesson of that course is initial description to plan of action. So if you have a description like this, in this case, it's very short and vague and is debatable in almost all lines. Maybe in other cases, client give you a more detailed description, but from that you need to transform that into actually step-by-step -step plan, at least for the first phases. And also the goal is to ask questions to the clients to avoid misunderstandings or problems down the line later in the project, which very often happens. So I will show you three examples of such courses where I transform the description into plan of action, and then I will summarize with the pattern, but maybe you will see the pattern along the way. So from that, the goal is to build database schema first, schema and models, and it could be in any form. It could be on paper. It could be in the list in a just text editor. So you need to be clear on what entities you're working with. And first, I advise you to list the table names, so roles, users, companies, and stuff like that. And then when you have the list of tables, only then think about the fields, the columns. The columns are kind of secondary. First is the names and relationships between the models, the entities. Just that exercise give you a lot of clarity on the project scope. So do you have five models or 20 models? What are the relationships between them? Or if there are unclear parts what relationships could be. Is it many to many or one to many? Could it be polymorphic or what? Of course, these are technical questions in terms of Laravel, but you can transform those into questions to clients like, can user have multiple roles? Like, can user have multiple addresses or stuff like that? So how I do that usually is transforming that into real migrations with Laravel and then export it with dBeaver in my case. At the end of this lesson, there should be this. And this is a technical schema of database, but you can easily send that to client. Even if they are not technical, they would roughly understand the names of the tables in English language. So that's the first step of the project scoping. And then the second step would be the list of features. And here I'm thinking about routes. So quite typical it is that one feature is actually a set of routes, one route group or even one specific route. So for example, admin can manage companies. This should be probably a route resource of that. Then what are the public routes? What are the routes for customer and other roles? And then at the end, you have plan of actions, really rough. It may be changed in the future, but with that, you have a list of questions to ask the client. This is your first goal, your milestone, the conversation with the client, because if you don't do that, you will not have enough clarity and it will totally bite you down the road when you start having questions at the 60% mark of the project or even worse, you may make a wrong decision about database schema or about routing or about whatever. And then the client is telling you after the first testing phase that you did something wrong and you need to re-change everything almost from the beginning in some cases. That is really painful. So to avoid that, I advise you to have that list of questions as a result of creating database schema and routes. Another example from another course where I did roughly the same is when we we're building API for car parking app. In this case, I didn't have any description from the client. It was a fictional project, how I imagined the car parking app to be. And these were the endpoints that I imagined. So user register login, get prices, start stop parking and view the prices. And also the models here. And 
in this case I drew it just on a piece of paper. This is a very simple database with just four tables and just from here you kind of know the scope of the project right away. And also notice in the schema I have dot 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 here I don't know the fields yet, the columns. This is kind of the second phase where you also can get the list of questions to the client like what should be the field type of this and that. And the third example from the third course, it was about travel agency API. And in this case, I had this description. Also, this lesson is available in video format and in the text. So I have job description. This is the description itself. A bit deeper, so there's glossary, there's goals. It was the task for a real job interview, by the way. And in this case, the client was technical and provided the model list and the routes as well in this format. So basically, in this case, client did that initial work for us, but that is kind of a luxury to have, especially in freelancing world, especially if the clients are not technical. In very rare cases, you would get something like this. Your goal is to prepare that list of endpoints or list of routes and model schema. So in that particular course, we could almost skip that initial phase of preparation. But see, I hope you agree with me that clarity on database schema and the routes, at least on like 80 or 90% level with some fixes, gives you a very good start and minimizes or lowers the percentage of misunderstandings down the road. What do you think about this philosophy of two things you need to do before you start coding? Laravel. Maybe you have more advice. What do you do in the initial phases of the project? Let's discuss in the comments below. And those courses, by the way, if you're interested in those, they are all available on LaravelDaily.com for premium members. I will link those courses in the description below as well. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.